Today in the world, there are 39 million blind people, most of whom live without sight just because they are poor. The real tragedy is that 80% of all cases of blindness could be prevented or cured with straightforward and low-cost treatments. Sight Savers is an international charity based in Haywards Heath, West Sussex. Established in 1950, the charity moved to Sussex in 1971. Haywards Heath proved to be an excellent choice, with its fast road and rail links to London, Brighton and the increasingly expanding Gatwick Airport. The new headquarters was opened by Her Majesty the Queen in December 1971. The charity was founded by Lady Jean Wilson and her husband, the late Sir John. He was blinded in a chemistry accident at school when he was 12. But yet, by the age of 18, he was up at Oxford, reading law, rowing for his college, uh, president of the Poetry Society, very good dancer, really enjoying life. And he always said that his own blindness was nothing more than a confounded nuisance. He was asked by the Colonial Office to go on a nine-month tour of East, West, Central Africa, Cyprus, Aden um, and Palestine. And he came back so appalled at the attitude of blindness he discovered everywhere. Blind people are considered a disgrace and a shame to their families and their villages and their communities. So he came back so angry about that he was determined to do something. And his idea was, his aspiration really, was that one day it would be powerful enough to really be heard worldwide, um, big enough to span continents, but yet simple enough that it would reach into an African village and do something worthwhile there. On a cold but sunny morning in December 2011, and to celebrate 40 years of the charity in Sussex, historic film footage was released from Sightsavers archives. Screen Archive South East, a public sector moving image archive, helped Sightsavers to preserve these fascinating records of past work. The Conservation Centre of the Moving Image Archive is housed within the West Sussex Record Office at Chichester. When the Site Savers films uh, arrived here, I will, as an archivist, have to um, look at them all and see if there's any splices that are buckled, if there's any sprockets that are torn, um, if everything is the right way up, if um, there are any unusual things like the, the film may be faded so the colour has gone to a red. And I also have to inspect obviously what's on the film because we want to know what's on the film so uh, we can then catalogue then and uh, people can actually then learn about these films. This is um, a film that came in from the Sight Savers collection and um, what I'm at the moment doing is starting to look at it. On This is a steam bag which is uh, a viewing machine for 16 millimeter. When I want to look in more details at the film, then I have a, here a way to viewing it in detail with my magnifying glass. And then I'll see much more clearly what exactly is in the single frame.
an important part of the archival process is the cataloging <coughs> of all the things that are relating to the films and that have come in. And uh, obviously you have the content, so you will write down that this film um, was sort of, you know, shows children dancing or in this case uh, a child that has uh, no good eyesight and has problems in the playing ground. Um, so we will enter all that information into a database. And as you can see here, there's uh, for the Sight Savers, Society for the Blind uh, film collection, um, there's quite a lot of detail about that collection as a whole. And then obviously we have all the, the titles that are linked to that collection as well as all the assets, which means the actual 16 millimeter reel that we were looking at before. In this condition fold now I will place all the, the side savers films that uh, came in and that I've looked at uh, on the steam bag and then catalogued and then they're going to be stored in the fold uh, so uh, they, they are looked after as best as possible. Thanks to the work of Screen Archive Southeast, the films showing how the charity transformed lives can now be viewed once again. <laughs> East Africa 1963 and a group of blind women is being led into a field treatment center run by the charity. Once again, the round of examinations begins. Is there any progress? Is there a little hope? Will an operation help? Watching these images for the first time in many years brings back many memories for Jean Wilson. Here come the patients to the village eye camp. They come in all sorts of ways, by bicycles, by walking. Some of them walk a very long way to get to the eye camp, <laughs> as you can see. We're exciting to see how the work's developed. We started way back in 1950 with minimal resources and sky-high aspirations, um, and it has developed steadily. Sightsavers is now one of the 50 largest charities in the country, but what of its future? Let's leave the last words to Chief Executive of Sightsavers, Carolyn Harper. Well, Sightsavers uh, is appalled that there are over 300 million people in the world who are blind. And of those, three quarters of them don't really need to be. Uh, their blindness could actually be avoided. Uh, it could be prevented or cured. So one of the key parts of Sightsavers' mission uh, is that we want to eliminate avoidable blindness from the world. Somebody asked me, um, where would you like Sightsavers to be in 60 years' time when you're celebrating, I don't know, your double diamond, whatever it is. And actually the answer to that is I'd like Sightsavers to be gone. I would love to be in a situation where Sightsavers just wasn't needed anymore.